Hi guys, um, welcome back to another flipped lesson. Today we're going to be talking about metamorphic rocks, one of the three major rock types. Um, just a reminder, please pause the video at any time should you need to, rewind it. I am going to be moving at a pretty fast pace. We do have a lot to cover in the next 15 minutes. Here we go. So um, the first thing, I like to use our rock cycle chart to talk about metamorphic rocks. Hey, why? Because the arrows that point to that given rock or sediment type in this case um, tell you how that thing was formed. So if we're looking at the image in front of us, we'll see that everything that points to metamorphic rock is going to say something like heat and or pressure. So metamorphic rocks are going to require definitely some heat and sometimes pressure. And that's going to be uh, show us the two different types of metamorphic rock. So um, first, metamorphism is going to occur in rocks due to the effects of both heat and pressure. Um, again, but there are two different types of metamorphism that we have to deal with. Um, we'll come back to momentarily. So if we're looking at this image on the left, this is going to be something more of like a granite. In this particular case, this is actually a diorite intermediate um, rock, an igneous rock. Now, if we add some heat and pressure, as we do here on the right side of the screen, right? So here's diorite, add some heat and pressure, you can get a metamorphic rock. Notice how the minerals have sort of aligned in these flat layers. The, that's the major difference here between igneous and metamorphic. A metamorphic can still have crystals, but they're usually not so randomly aligned like they are in igneous rocks. Looking at the image ahead of us, we can find that the mineral arrangement prior to metamorphism, that's on this side, okay, is very random and scattered. These are what we refer to as intergrown crystals, a random arrangement of crystals. This left side is going to represent something that is igneous, a rock that's igneous, versus what's on the right, which is nice and aligned. We had this stress coming from the left side, stress coming from the right side. This is pressure horizontal pressure coming from the left and the right side and that's going to align into these nice vertical bands of alternating light and dark colors okay so banding is as we see here on the bottom right corner a nice organized arrangement of minerals more specifically this is banding is alternating light so here's light color at a and dark colored at b minerals. So those minerals in the rock are nice and aligned. You're going to see sometimes we refer to this as zebra stripes. Okay, zebra stripes and we also um, I like to call this nice zebra because this particular rock is going to end up being the rock nice. We will come back to this a little later on. So um, again looking at some pressure what they can do to rocks here on the left you have this random assortment of minerals here on the left and then it aligns into bands due to that pressure and that stress from the sides. So this on the left would be granite, intergrown crystals, randomly intergrown. And I know you can't see that bottom part, it got cut off, but that's nice crystals in an organized pattern. It's very organized into kind of layers. The two major types of metamorphism that we're dealing with are both regional and contact. Okay, regional metamorphism big large areas, lots of mountain building, both heat and pressure are going to be involved here. You need heat to make the rocks change a little bit, alter their chemical composition, and make them like kind of a moldable, right? The hotter something is, the little warmer, it's going to be a little more moldable. Whereas in contact metamorphism, here on the bottom, you're only dealing with heat. This is very key. Contact metamorphism only involves heat no pressure, maybe the tiniest bit of pressure from layers of rock, but as a general rule, none at all. But it can also change rock. Remember, these are both for forms of metamorphism, and metamorphism means change. So I bring up this image from your reference table, page 5. I believe this is actually an older version. Um, if you look carefully, you're going to see this in the bottom, what I highlighted, overriding plate, subducting plate. We call this a convergent plate boundary. This is where there's lots of metamorphism. And the weird thing is that here in New York, on this part of the map, of course, that's a lot more than New York that I circled, but in that part of the map, more particularly if we um, can point out that New York there is going to be somewhere there in the middle, you'll notice that you can't see it here, but in New York we have a lot of metamorphic rocks. 
So the examples that you're looking at at this current moment are going to be our foliated examples of metamorphic rock. If you open your reference table to page 7, you go to the chart on the bottom, you're going to notice um, these are all there on the top half. We'll come back to this momentarily, just showing you some examples. Metamorphic rocks usually are going to be deformed because of heat and pressure, as we mentioned. Notice, again, we have this horizontal pressure and stress from either side. Okay, And then that turns our nice flat layers into something that's really messed up. We refer to this as distortion. Usually we call that nice. This is generally this particular rock that you're going to see these really screwed up layers in. That's nice. Again, we refer to that as nice zebra because it all often have um, alternating light and dark stripes, so zebra stripes. So here's another example of distortion, and you guessed it. That's nice that we're looking at right now. More examples, a little bit of a pixelated version, but still the same concept. The minerals have been forced into alignment. Um, and you could imagine that these layers were nice and flat at one point, and they just no longer are due to that extreme heat and pressure from metamorphic rock formation. Another example of distortion, notice the flat layers on the top. They haven't been disturbed. This is probably a sedimentary rock. And if you add some heat and pressure, you might get this nice here on the bottom. So I think you're getting the point. This is banding on the bottom, and it is a rock we call nice. You see banding? It's nice. We'll come back to that momentarily. First, a metamorphic rock exposed to too much heat can melt. And if a, think about it. If a rock is to melt 100% all the way into a liquid, not like with a little bit of heat and be changed, but totally melted into a liquid, go from solid to liquid phase, it's going to become a molten rock, meaning magma or lava. And then when we're talking about magma, what happens when magma cools? Well, magma is going to become an, I'm sorry, I didn't write it up here, but an igneous rock. So if magma cools, now we're talking about an igneous rock versus metamorphic. So please keep in mind, for metamorphic rocks, okay, good take-home point, the heat does not melt the rock all the way. It melts it enough to change it, but if it were to melt all the way, then we'd be getting a whole new igneous rock. So let's not go that far. Contact metamorphism, on the other hand, more specifically, if there's hot magma, that just means that right around the hot magma on the sides of it, you see that little layer that's drawn in the image, okay, that's going to be where metamorphic rock forms. So you might have something like sedimentary rock here. You might eventually, if that magma cools, get igneous rock there in the middle. And then on the sides, on the border, that's where you get your changed metamorphic rock. Again, this is contact metamorphism, not regional. Another example of contact, you see that kind of band of redness around this uh, magma chamber here on the left. This whole area here is a place where metamorphic rock is being formed. The sedimentary rocks that you see, those nice flat layers, Okay, that's been intruded with some magma, and that magma heats up the rocks around it and changes them. So you will find metamorphic rocks surrounding that, just like the previous image. Another real-life example, this is a side of a road, a road cut, um, where they use some dynamite to blow out the road and, and to show us um, what's hidden in the rock. You'll notice, again, here's your igneous intrusion, one color. Then you have your metamorphic rock there. Notice the color is, we're going from black here to brown here, and then this kind of light tan, which actually ends up being sedimentary. So you have all three of your rock types shown in this image. Very important question. Regents questions always throw these at you. You'll see something like this. You've got some layers of rock. They're telling you what the layers are, okay? And they're showing contact metamorphism here with these lashes. 
it was some dash marks, whatever you want to call them. Regents question example, um, let's see if I added something here. I didn't. Okay, so just to point this out, they might ask you a question like, what type of metamorphic rock would form at the border between, let's say, the limestone and the granite intrusion, meaning at A? They might also ask you the same question at B. Now, what kind of rock would form there? We need to get specific. We need to go to the reference table. So I'm going to skip through a couple, little bit of this. Here it is. Here's our reference table. So if we have a limestone as a parent rock, limestone, when it gets either regionally or contact metamorphosed, it's going to become marble. So our answer to that question would be marble. What if they asked us the same thing, but this time they asked us about sandstone? Simple, we'd find our sandstone, and we'd find that sandstone becomes quartzite with a little bit of heat and or pressure. Notice all these rocks down here could be regional or contact. Just for the record, you ever get a question like this? Just write hornfells. Okay? Contact metamorphism, hornfells, various rocks. It really can be any rock can become hornfells given the opportunity to be metamorphosed. That's that. Let's look at some examples. Here's slate. Okay, and then back to our image, which we just drew all over. Um, slate is just a rock type that's formed from shale. This is low-grade metamorphism, okay, formed by regional metamorphism with heat and pressure. And it only contains mica. Why only mica? Because if we take a look at this line, we notice that above this line, we only have this, this part, which is mica. So it only contains mica. More foliated metamorphic rocks. Phyllite, look at the image. This is phyllite. Here's phyllite again. Phyllite is foliation surfaces, shiny from microscopic microcrystals. There they are. Here's our mi microscopic microcrystals. These are actually might be little garnets in there. Okay. This is more medium grade regional. So in other words, it's in the middle in between those two lines. And if we follow phyllite along, we'll notice that it contains Mica, yes. Quartz, yes. Feldspar, yes. Amphibole, garnet, but not pyroxene because it does not cross over that. And just to expand, fine to medium grain size, not huge crystals, not too small. And we call this mineral alignment because, no, it doesn't quite have banding yet. As we continue to move forward, here's a schist. Look at those big platy mica crystals, and there they are, platy mica crystals. Schist is going to contain all this stuff, maybe a little bit of pyroxene, not a lot, and everything else is the same on the left for phyllite. Please keep in mind all these on the top are foliated, meaning they contain some form of layers. Moving forward, you've seen this five times already this, during this presentation. This is nice. Okay, nice is here, call it nice zebra. High grade metamorphism, right? If you follow this down, that's the highest grade. It's at the bottom. This is high. This would be low. Okay. It's going to contain all of these minerals, very large crystals, and we call this banding. That's banding. All right. Limestone will become marble, given the opportunity to metamorphose. Here's more examples of marble. This is now on the bottom half of the chart. We call these non-foliated because they show no layers. I mean, look at that. No layers. If we go back to nice, there's layers. So... Marble comes from limestone or dolostone. We refer to that as the parent rock because it's what it comes from. It can be formed regional or contact. It's made of calcite or dolomite, just what it's made of, right? This is under composition. Okay, we have fine to coarse here on the left, and all these things here are non foliated on the bottom, all these different rocks. We continue to move forward. Sandstone will become quartzite, given the opportunity to metamorphose. In other words, if you add a little bit of heat or pressure, there's another quartzite. And here we go. Metamorphism of quartz sandstone becomes quartzite. Yeah, there's your map symbol. That's what it would look like on a map. And we have regional or contact. It could be formed from heat and pressure or just heat. It's formed, it's, I'm sorry, it's mostly made of quartz. These are going to be anywhere from tiny grains fine to coarse large grains and still non-foliated. Okay. This one I love because Meta Conglomerate looks just like Conglomerate. And we only have 15 seconds left. I'm just going to fire through these just so you can see it. Okay, anthracite coal, all black, and that's just like its image 
here. Just pay attention to the chart, just like all the others. Guys, thank you for stopping by.